Fino is coming to join me for this video. You want to come up? There we go. This boy is getting so big already. It's actually crazy how much he's grown in the last few weeks. Anyway, hello. Welcome back to my channel and to another vlog. For this week's vlog, I thought I would chat a little bit more about our house and how we came about finding this place and give you guys a few tips if you're looking for a place to rent in Vancouver. Like anywhere in the world it is quite difficult to find a rental place especially one that you like absolutely love and that ticks every single box and when we came to look for this place we had a very very specific list of things that we wanted. Unfortunately we managed to find it and we are absolutely loving our place. We've been in here for just over almost five weeks now and we've had Fino for most of that we got him a few days after we moved in and um, we are just loving it like the house has come together so nicely we still got quite a bit to do upstairs but it just feels like home and it's been like a very easy and smooth transition and I thought that I would miss living in Yaletown because that's where we were before we had a one bedroom apartment in Yaletown and it was just like a very different lifestyle just a different vibe altogether but I am just loving being here we're now in the suburbs we're in like the Kits Point grey area and um, we managed to find a house which is quite rare in Vancouver but they do exist there's lots of gems that do exist it's just a case of knowing what to look for and also a case of finding them anyway hopefully you'll find this useful and you'll get a few tips when it comes to renting we have rented now four properties in Vancouver is it four yeah four so we do know quite a bit about the process and I do know how frustrating it can be and it's definitely a game of patience so if you're looking for a place the first place I would suggest looking is Craigslist Facebook marketplace and Padmapper so Craigslist generally has the most listings like private landlords real estate companies rental agencies usually they're always list on Craigslist and you can filter it by like bedroom number by price by location by amenities all that kind of thing and that's generally where most properties are listed that's where we found all of the properties that we've moved into we found them all on craigslist and you can also filter the listings by map which is what we did because we had quite a specific idea of where we wanted to live and so when you look at it on map view you can kind of you can get an idea of where everything is how far it is you know to the beach to the main road and that kind of thing and um, that's how we did it and another thing that we did is we um selected the recently added filter and basically it will show you all the listings that have been added in the last 24 hours and so that's what you're doing because basically we we trawl through like every single listing over a period of like three months so every day we would keep on checking craigslist keep on checking the recently added and see what had been added to the listings another great one is facebook so on facebook marketplace is actually a little section called properties to rent and i didn't know this until now i don't know how long it's been there but you can find properties on there we were actually finding some different properties that were listed on craigslist and you can set up a little alert so that you'll get an alert when a property comes up on facebook that kind of matches your criteria of like bedrooms a price of location and that kind of thing and there are some really great places on there and then padmapper is another one that basically kind of compiles listings from all different websites and compiles them onto one map and i found that they were sort of duplicates of what we were finding on Craigslist. Like we didn't find many new ones on Padmapper, but it's another one and you just kind of have to cover all bases and just look on everything. And it is literally a game of like checking and checking and checking every single day, especially if you have a specific idea of what you want. My first piece of advice, if you're looking for a rental property in Vancouver or anywhere else, is to be patient. Like you have to be patient and you have to be prepared for a little bit of disappointment too. Like back in December, we found a house that we absolutely loved. We put in an application, we just completely fell in love with it and we didn't end up getting it, which was really, really sad. And in hindsight, I'm glad we didn't get it because had we have got that place we wouldn't have found this place and this literally is just everything we wanted and it's cheaper too and it's more private too so it's one of those things that you might find somewhere that you love and you might not get it and you might have that kind of period where you're super disheartened and you're super frustrated but I promise you something better and something perfect will come along it is literally just a game of patience and you never know what's going to pop up that day or that week or that month so another piece of advice for you is to make sure you look beyond the pictures and I say that because this place that we're living in now we actually came across this listing back in October when we first started looking and we found this listing we looked at the pictures and we were like mm, it's okay but 
it's a bit dark, it looks a bit dingy, it looks a bit old, the garden was a total mess and we basically wrote it off. Um, but I think we did try and organise a viewing at some point and then it fell through and then we just completely forgot about it because we were like, ah, pictures aren't very nice let's not bother and fast forward about three months we then got to the point where we were like you know what let's just see anything and everything let's not take the pictures kind of too seriously because you know people aren't very good at taking pictures a lot of the time and we actually went to see a place around the corner which ended up being the same as the pictures <laughs> it really was not nice at all but it reminded us of this place because i remember we saw the outside and so we texted the landlord organized a viewing came to look at this place and we were like, oh my God, it's literally everything that we could have asked for. So had we just taken a chance at the beginning and not taking the pictures too seriously, then we could have been in here three months prior. But yeah, that is a very big lesson. And actually, when I think about it, like for our blue house, our old apartment, that was actually the same. I remember the morning when I found that listing and I showed it to Matt and he was like, oh no, the pictures are horrible. I was like, let's just go see it. And it ended up being everything we wanted. So you just, you can't take the pictures too seriously. You just have to just come and look because you never quite know what it's gonna look like. It's always nice to get like a feel for the place and you can't really get the vibe of a place until you actually physically come and see it. Another thing that we will do is um, we would look on Google Map Street View. So usually when you know, you're know you liaising with a landlord, normally they'll tell you uh, the street number and the actual address. And so we would just go onto Google Street View and just have a look around the area, have a snoop, see whether it's on a busy road see what intersection it's on see um i don't know just just kind of get a feel for the area and i found that actually helped a lot just to get a feel for a place before going to see it because it does take a lot of time out of your day going to see all these places and so street view is a really good one to go by also it's good to kind of figure out like whether somewhere is north facing or south facing or east or west if that's something that is important to you for us we really wanted something that was south facing preferably not north facing because a lot of north facing places um are a little bit darker and we wanted something with a lot of natural light so when i said that we were picky and we had a lot of specifics and requirements I am not lying. We had a lot of um, a lot of things that we wanted to find in the property, and thankfully we managed to find it. It just took time. It took us like four months to find it. Yeah, I did write a few notes just to make sure that I am crossing everything off. Um, okay, so in terms of what we looked at when trying to find this place, we wanted something that was two bedroom. We wanted a garden and something pet friendly for Fino, who is just sat on the floor and snoring his head off. Um, we also wanted something with a private entrance, and that was really important to us that we ideally wanted like a house or or something with a private entrance a townhouse or a ground floor apartment or something like that just because we knew that we were going to get a dog we wanted to be able to just go out into the outside world which is actually a really big deal coming from living in an, on an 11th floor apartment because obviously it's like it takes actually ages to actually get outside and we didn't have a balcony either so we really wanted a private entrance we obviously wanted something that fit our budget we wanted something outside of the city so we did have quite a specific requirement and we also wanted something that was unfurnished which actually was quite hard to find and there's definitely been a shift because i remember when we moved here six years ago a lot of places in vancouver were unfurnished whereas this time a lot of places were furnished um, and that is something to think about is whether you want to furnish it yourself or whether you want something that is fully furnished like our previous blue house our apartment that was completely furnished like everything was provided and that is that was actually a real gem but obviously not everywhere is kind of perfectly furnished and sometimes it is nice just to do it yourself and it is quite easy to do it on a budget as well if you want to with like facebook marketplace and craigslist and places like that so in terms of negotiations this is something that you can do with your landlord obviously every landlord is different rental agencies are often a little bit more rigid than like private landlords but in terms in terms of like having a pet if you're looking for somewhere that's pet friendly don't be afraid just to ask a lot of the properties that you'll come across will probably say no pets this place actually did say pet friendly off the bat but a lot of them will say no pets and for those ones when we were looking we did contact them and we said you know if we give you a pet deposit would you allow a dog and most of the time they actually said yes they were just like yeah you know if it's a well-behaved dog um if it's not 
you know chewing everything then it's fine just give us a pet deposit so i will say just ask if it says like no bills included if it says no parking if it says no pets and you want something different to that just ask them and the worst that they'll say is no but it's always worth asking just in case they change their mind another thing that you can do is negotiate the rent and that's what we did um the rent for this place was a little bit higher than what we wanted to pay and we just didn't think it was worth what it was listed for especially because it did need decorating the garden was such a mess so we basically said you know we'll look after the house we'll take care of the garden we'll tidy it up a bit if you lower the rent and the landlord was happy with that so there were a few things that we asked him to do like we asked him to fix the hob because there was a crack in that which could potentially be dangerous and we asked him to decorate because when we when we looked at this place at the beginning it was painted like a horrible it was like a weird brownie it's like a weird brownie beige color really not nice so we basically said we want the whole place painting white and that got done and that literally transformed the space so i think it's important too to when it's a rental especially like you have to just you have to use your imagination and you have to think what could we do to enhance this space because not everywhere is going to be perfect and when you're renting there is sort of a limit as to what you can do but you can get really creative and I feel like we have completely transformed this space just with you know some very really nice furniture some nice lighting with painting it that made the world a difference and outside we've done so much work on the garden and it's just an extension of our living space which is really nice so you do kind of have to get creative and just use your imagination and think what can I do to make this mine and at the end of the day like we know this isn't a house that we're going to live in forever but we want to something that we could live in for you know a few years until we at some point can buy our own house and make our own house our own so yeah there's lots of things that you can do lots of upgrades like surfacings like painting obviously putting up mirrors and pictures and all that stuff and I found that Canva is an amazing place to make mood boards I use it a lot anyway it's basically like a, a very very like easy Photoshop I guess it's just online and it's just so easy to make mood boards and like just to kind of bring all your ideas together and I basically did that for um for this place when we came and looked at it I took tons and tons of pictures which I would highly recommend take lots of pictures take videos and I find that that's really helpful to look back on because often when you look at a place you know you kind of you're just like you're not taking everything in afterwards you clock things that you didn't notice when you were there when you have lots of pictures so take lots of pictures and take lots of video but what I would do is I um, basically just took loads of pictures put them into Canva and then I basically like kind of added in and photoshopped in furniture and like lighting and all that kind of thing just to get an idea of how the place would look I found that actually to be really useful and that's something you can do if you're renting or if you're buying and it's just like a really fun activity and um, especially if you're buying new furniture and you're trying to imagine the space before you move in in terms of like the application process and the official documents a lot of landlords or agencies will ask you to fill out a tenancy application form and on there you'll add in all of your details so normally ask for your employment details, your salary, a reference, which could be like your employer or your previous landlord. And what else will they ask for? Sometimes they'll ask to do a credit check. I don't actually think we've ever been credit checked before, but they might ask for that. We were once asked to give a copy of our bank statement, which I didn't feel comfortable doing. And I don't know if legally they can ask for that. Um, but you, you will be required to give some information when you apply for a property. And sometimes there might be like, 10 15 other people also applying so that's why I said like sometimes you might not get it because you might be up against other people who are applying and when you come to you know officially rent the property you will sign a tenancy agreement and the tenancy agreement will basically be like your contract for the property usually places are um, on a one-year lease sometimes it's less than that but generally it's like six months or one year and after one year it'll then go on to like a rolling month to month contract so if you want to move out you would only have to give it one month's notice and that was the case with our blue house because we'd been there for almost five years we were just on like a month to month rolling contract then and then you will also be required to fill out a inspection form and make sure you fill out an inspection form and if your landlord or potential landlord doesn't present it then make sure you ask them because legally they're required to do that and with 
with the inspection form, you'll basically go around the property, note down any damage, anything that's broken, etc. Because when you then go to move out, you refer back to that document and you are allowed like a wear and tear allowance, obviously for like um, reasonable wear and tear for the time that you live there. But make sure you do this inspection report. And I say that because when we moved to Vancouver, the very first property that we lived in, we didn't do one of these inspection forms. We just didn't know, we were just excited. We just, we didn't do one and the landlord never presented one. So when it came to moving out, he basically claimed that we'd broken a whole bunch of stuff and um, obviously we didn't and it ended up that I filled in an application to basically take him to court because he withheld our deposit and I think it got to like a day before the court date and he ended up just sending us the deposit back because I think he knew that he didn't have a leg to stand on so yeah make sure you do like an official tenancy uh, agreement and also an inspection form and never ever hand over a deposit if you haven't physically seen the place there are scam artists out there I remember when we first moved here and seeing all these amazing properties and been like wow this is amazing it looks too good to be true and usually it was because you know you'll get in contact and they'll ask for the deposit before you've even seen it and and there's all sorts of scams that go around so if you feel like it's a little bit fishy if it seems too good to be true then usually it is so yeah make sure you don't hand over any money before you've gone to see the place um, because there are people out there who will basically try and take advantage and that is not what you want so i feel like i have pretty much covered the basics. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that would be really useful to know. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice really is just be patient. Like it might take you months to find a place. It also depends how picky you are. We were super picky. We weren't we weren't in a big rush, but we were also in a rush, but we wanted somewhere that was perfect. And that would sort of suit our needs for the next few years. And that would be perfect for Fino. So a garden was really important to us. But yeah, there are lots of different kinds of properties out there. You've obviously got like high rises um, and sort of lower rises in places like West End. The buildings are a little bit older. They're a little bit smaller than where we are in the Kitts Point Grey area. There is a lot of houses. There's a lot of laneway houses, which is sort of like a house, um, it's kind of attached to the main house, but it's sort of a standalone house. But the downside of that is that you're basically like living opposite your landlord, but it is a standalone house on its own. And that's actually what we were looking for in the first place until we found our place. And ours is, it's a semi-detached house. So there is someone on the back side of us, but we have the downstairs and the upstairs and the attic. Uh, and we don't have anyone below us in the basement suite or anything like that. So it's actually perfect and exactly what we were looking for. But there are lots of places out there. You just sort of, you just have to keep looking and you have to be patient and you have to not get disheartened. And um, because I promise the right place will come along it just takes time and patience, basically. But anyway, this video has gone on for longer than I expected. I feel like I just go on and on and on and just end up waffling. I hope you found this useful and it's given you a little bit of insight into the whole like renting process and what it looks like. If you have any questions, then let me know in the comment box down below. And I've actually written a blog post as well, all about renting in Vancouver. Um, I have covered some similar points in the blog post, but the blog post is a little bit more in depth. So I'll leave that in the description box down below if you want to go and check that out. But anyway, thanks so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye!